All right, fun comparison time. Today, I'm gonna to be comparing three different lavalier mics in three completely different price ranges. A $29 budget lav mic from FTF Gear, the widely popular $200 Tascam DR10L, and my current go-to lav mic that I've been using for years, the $600 Sennheiser G4. Now, our goal in this video is to see if you can tell the difference in audio quality to help you decide if the quality difference and added feature of the more expensive options are worth the extra money, or if you can save a bunch of money by going with something less expensive. Before we get started though, full disclosure, the budget mic we're using in this comparison is one that we've just started selling ourselves. And we'll soon be rolling out a bunch of other budget-friendly camera accessories under this new FTF gear brand with the mission to help you guys find affordable budget-friendly accessories that can pass as professional quality. So full disclosure, it is in my best interest for you to buy the budget lav mic because I'm the seller. However, I am also an affiliate for the more expensive Tascam and Sennheiser lav mics. So I'll make 4% if you purchase either of those, which comes out to me making about the same or more than the profits I'd make from the budget lav mic. So I don't really care which of these mics you buy, I benefit either way. My goal in this video is to help you decide which tool is right for you by showing you what you can get in different price ranges. And if you felt like the audio quality in this video so far has sounded decent, then you'll be pleasantly surprised to learn that all the audio you've been hearing so far is coming from that $29 lav mic. But let's now compare it to our more expensive options, see if you can tell the difference, and then afterwards we'll go over some of the differences and features and conveniences to be aware of. First, check out the comparison. All right, check one, two, three, check one, two, three. This is the audio you're hearing indoors from each of these three lav mics. I will cut between each of them so you can see how they sound indoors. Right now you're listening to the FTF lav mic and now we are gonna be cutting to the Tascam mic so you can see how that one sounds in comparison. And now we will cut to the Sennheiser mic so you can see how that one compares being in a large indoor room such as this. Let's now go outside and see how they sound, cutting out a little bit of traffic noise. And we are now outside. I'm walking on some rocks that are super loud. We are approaching a busy street and there's a lot of wind blowing. So we're gonna see how these mics do at cutting out some of this background noise. Right now you are listening to the FTF Lav mic and now you're listening to the Tascam mic and now you're listening to the Sennheiser mic. Let's just stand still for a minute here and let you see the wind. Probably blowing at 10 miles an hour, so a good amount of wind. And we'll cut between the mics so you can see which one is doing a better job at cutting out the wind and all of these cars consistently driving by the side of the road. There you have it. So as you can see, there is a difference. I do think the $29 mic has the lowest quality sound of the three, but unless you heard them back to back to back, you probably wouldn't have noticed much. I definitely say it's not 10 to 20 times worse, which is the difference in price range. Surprisingly though, I actually think the $200 Tascam audio sounds better than the $600 Sennheiser audio. And the main reason I think that is, is because the Sennheiser is the only one of these three that is actually wireless and sends a signal from the transmitter on the person speaking and goes to the receiver that is plugged into the camera. So though this is the most convenient way to capture the audio because you don't have to sync the audio up in post and the reason why it's so much more expensive, this is also its biggest downfall because it means that sometimes your audio will have static or random pops or frequency issues that the other two just won't have because they're not sending a signal. It's all wired. And I've had enough shoots where I run into some frequency issues that messed up my audio. And so there it is. He also has an iMac Pro. G-Tech Drive Tower um, and make me want to use my Tascam more often and just deal with the syncing up in post. So even though I've been an avid user and recommender of the $600 Sennheiser lav mic for years, I actually don't recommend buying it over the Tascam unless you absolutely need that wireless transmission feature. But if you don't mind syncing the audio later in post, I'd recommend paying three times less, reduce your risk of frequency issues, and go with the Tascam. Now as for the Tascam mic versus the FTF gear mic, yes, the Tascam is a better mic, but is it seven times better? Let's take a look at what makes it better and if it's worth the price jump. First off, the biggest difference and most important difference is the overall audio quality. It's just going to be better. I do think the FTF gear mic can pass as professional, but it's not going to produce as high quality of audio as the Tascam or the Sennheiser. As you may have noticed, depending on how nice of speakers you're listening on, the FTF gear mic is a little bit boomier, picking up more bass, and it's a little flatter, not picking up as much high end. So it is gonna require some post-processing to sound its best, but keep in mind, all three of these mics are 
going to need some EQ and compression in post to make them sound their best. But the FTF gear mic needed a little bit more work in post and it still didn't come out sounding quite as full or clear. But to the untrained ear, which are most ears, again, unless you heard these mics being compared back to back to back, you probably wouldn't think twice about the audio not being high quality enough on the FTF gear mic. Now the second biggest difference between these two is that the Tascam comes with its own recorder so you can record directly to a micro SD card versus the FTF gear mic. There is no recorder so you have to either plug into a camera or a smartphone. However, if you don't want to have to sync up your audio in post, the FTF gear mic does at least give you the option to plug directly into a camera as long as you stay within 20 feet of the camera because it's wired whereas you don't have that option with the Tascam. And if you just make TikTok videos or Instagram lives or shoot with your phone as your primary camera, then plugging your mic directly into the phone would actually be more convenient versus the Tascam not having that option, so you'd have to sync that up in post. So this just comes down to how you create your content, but on a professional level, most will prefer the built-in recorder of the Tascam. Now, third biggest difference and reason why I think the Tascam is best over both the FTF gear and Sennheiser Lobs is that it has dual gain recording, meaning that you can record at one gain level and then 12 decibels below that gain level, so you have a backup track in case your first track peaked or distorted. To my knowledge, not even the Sennheiser has this option, and if you ever get tasked with filming something like a Brody Smith video, you're gonna want that dual gain because he likes to scream a lot. Love you anyway, bro. Ah! <laughs> My hit, man. <laughs> So there's the main pros and cons and differences between these mics, at least the ones that are important to me. Obviously there's other factors to consider, but I think the biggest things to consider are the overall sound quality, the price, and the convenience and practicality of using them. So based on what you've heard in this video, I'll let you judge on whether the audio quality difference and product feature differences are worth the price jump to you. Personally, I think the Tascam is the best overall option of the three for professional shoots and the one that I currently recommend you buy if you have the money. Links are in the description to buy all three of these mics. However, I do recognize that many of you that watch my videos want more budget-friendly options because you constantly ask me for them. That's why we started this new FTF gear line, is to do all the dirty work of scouting out the best budget accessories, do all the comparison tests for you, and then provide you with our top pick at the most competitive price. So for those interested in buying this budget option, let me take a sec to talk about why I chose to buy and sell this specific mic, what it comes with, and some of the pros and cons to be aware of if you do buy it. For starters, the main reason I like this mic over the other budget mics we tested is we felt that it have the cleanest, most professional sounding audio quality. Beyond that, most budget mics like this allow you to plug into either a camera or a phone. However, you usually have to switch out an adapter when going from one to the other, but this one has a nice convenient switch on the mic itself, which is much easier than having to carry it around and being careful not to lose a small adapter. Now in the packaging, the FTF gear lav mic comes with a microphone that has a 20 foot cable, allowing you the option of plugging directly into a camera and still giving you a good range of motion to move around. It also comes with a clip so that you can clip the mic onto your shirt, or if you want to hide the mic, you can just tape it to the inside of your clothes. It also comes with a windscreen to help reduce the wind from muffling your audio, and it also comes with a quarter inch adapter allowing you to plug into an audio recorder, but most people will probably plug straight into a DSLR camera or into a smartphone. And depending on whether you're plugged into a camera or a smartphone, like I mentioned, you have a switch on the mic to easily toggle between them. The downside of the switch to be aware of is if you accidentally forget to switch this to smartphone when plugged into a smartphone, or vice versa, your gain levels will show that it's picking up audio, but it will actually just be recording audio from the phone mic, not from the lav mic, so make sure to switch that to whatever your mic is plugged into. Now the one accessory you might have to buy separately if you plan on using your phone to record the lav audio is a dongle if your phone doesn't come with a headphone jack like the iPhone. And as a couple tips to get the best results out of this guy, I recommend downloading this free voice record app and choosing the highest quality settings and then manually setting the gain according to the loudness of your subject so that it won't ever peak or distort. And as a general tip for best results, you want that lob to be directly under the mouth, about six inches away, and you want your audio levels peaking at around negative 12 decibels. Now, you can also use your native camera app or your native sound recorder on your phone, but because it doesn't let you set the gain levels manually, be aware that if you yell or laugh loudly or something really loud, those might distort a little because they're using auto leveling that isn't completely reliable. You definitely can use these native apps, and here's a little example of real world use. This is me using the lav mic in a golf vlog and just using the native auto gain recorder on my phone. Go ahead and check that out. So uh, we got ourselves a 425 par four. Of course we are doing mulligans off the first. That's a given, but I don't need a mulligan. You wanna know why? This is why. Exploded it right down the middle, typical. A little bit of wind right to left. Just gonna sit this one up right in the green. How's that sound? 
Ooh, it's a little short, it looks like. Not perfect. Oh my gosh. By short, he means pin high in the center of the green. <laughs> That's Parker going a foot to the right of the hole here. Ooh, not enough. Didn't quite get that, but nice. not a bad part to start. So as you see, you can quickly up the production value of your vlogs or tutorials or interviews by using this $29 lav mic instead of relying on the in-camera audio from your phone or camera, which is going to sound a lot more amateur. So not a bad little upgrade in audio quality for the price. Again, links in the description where you can buy all three of these. And if you plan on going with the Tascam, I might hold off if I were you because in December of 2020, Zoom is coming out with a competing lav mic with a built-in recorder as well. Well, called the Zoom F2, which I've already pre-ordered as it does look better than the Tascam in my opinion, because it can record in 32-bit float, which basically means it doesn't matter where you set the gain levels because of its ultra high dynamic range. It's basically a step up from the dual gain recording capabilities of the Tascam. And it's actually $50 cheaper than the Tascam at $150. So be on the lookout for that to drop. I'll leave a link to that one as well. I can't fully back it yet because I haven't used it, but if it's as good as it looks, I do think it will become my new go-to lav mic. But that's it for our comparison and hopefully this was helpful in helping you decide which price range is right for your needs. And as we always mention, buying the right gear is only half the battle. Learning how to creatively and technically use them is the more important half. So make sure to check out fulltimefilmmaker.com, the ultimate online film course to take your videos and audio recordings to the next level and help you land higher paying clients with your video skills. Lastly, folks, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. We are gonna be dropping more budget-friendly camera accessories in the future, so stay tuned for that. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.